I was thinking of a story and I thought of another one. I said, I'll have to tell them both. The uh, years, long time ago, I always say years ago, I think I started every video years ago, way back when, back in the olden days, <clears throat> I was at work one night and uh, we always had a TV, back when we had a TV, we always had a TV on in the background. And we'd be doing something else or whatever. There was one particular night I had it on MTV. And they were doing one of their exposés or something like that. I don't know what they called it. Interviewing people. And I'm doing something, and I look up at the screen, and the guy on the screen who they're interviewing is a customer of mine. Someone who is actually in, would come into that same building where I'm watching this thing, and we've done business with him. <laughs> and uh, so I turn it on, I start listening. And I never knew what the guy did for a living. Um, but they're interviewing him, going back and forth. He's explaining that he is a narcotics agent. It's totally too good by surprise. Narcotics agent, and uh, I think working with the, the sheriff's department or with some federal agency or something like that. This is late, this is like early mid 90s. I think we had a DA then. But uh, there had been this series on MTV about <clears throat> methamphetamine, the effects it has on families, where it comes from, how it's you know producing all this stuff. And they started in Kentucky and then ended up like in Texas or somewhere. But as they as the show went on every week, it got into a more serious, intense um, <clears throat> situation where this, you know, it comes from small town America, blah, 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 this and that. And the final or one of the last episodes is the one right, this guy that I know is they're interviewing him. And it was for he's this was this is Fresno and Tulare County. <clears throat> and he's going on and they're saying how basically 80 or 90 percent of all the meth at that time came from here um, <clears throat> and that's kind of that's blowing me I'm, it blows me away that this guy's on television one he's a cop and two what he's talking about I said you know basically all where everyone else is just playing with it a little bit here a little bit there growing it it's a commercial entity here huge <clears throat> and that really blew me away the weird uh the weird thing about it, though, is, and I asked him, like a month later, he came in, I asked him about it. I said, you know, no one, no one here knows about it. No one here says, oh, yeah, by the way, we have the, uh, you know, we're the main production, uh, you know, we're the generator of the majority of all the methamphetamine in the world. It comes from right here. And we grow oranges and almonds and all, you know. No one knew. No, that was not a common thing until they saw it on, on MTV. And he said, yeah, it's not something that people talk about. He said, we've known about it for, it was like, they were into it for like a decade almost. And Tulare County, which is south of us, has always had a, a drug history. As far as dope deals and stuff like that. But that's just the way it is. But it was, it was, so, it was interesting to see someone that, that you knew on television talking about some big, terrible epidemic thing in your town that you knew nothing about. Anyhow. <clears throat> about the same time, I had a... Uh, a friend, a guy who's much older than I am, but he was a, a teacher in a county north of us. We have Madera County. I'm not picking on Madera County, but this is where he was. But he was a uh, uh, high school teacher. And uh, he had this really smart kid in his class. It, heavy Hispanic population. It's heavy Hispanic everywhere here, which is not a problem. But this particular county is, is uh, majority Hispanic. Um, so he has this, this young kid that's really smart, really doing well in class, but he's starting to hang out. My friend noticed he's starting to hang out with the wrong kids, gangbangers. And he says, man, someone's got to, we've got to catch this kid quick, get him on, you know, get him on the straight and narrow because he has a good career ahead of him, potential, and hopefully he doesn't waste it on this, you know, gang lifestyle. So he sets up a, a not an intervention, but a, calls the parents in for a uh, parent-teacher conference thing. And so the parents come in, he sits down, he tells them how smart the kid is, and he's doing well, this and that. But he's hanging around with these wrong, the wrong kids, 
and uh, tell the parents that he fears that you know he might end up with these gangbangers and and, and throw this uh, you know throw his education or throw his future away. And I just want to let you know. And the dad says, "I'm a member of that gang. That's my gang." <laughs> you know, in other words. You're barking up the wrong tree. The dad was in the same gang that they were trying to get the kid involved in. And this just blew my friend away. He says, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine I'm trying to tell these people. And coming to find out, they're part of the gang he's trying to get into. And they're totally cool with it. So yeah, the, the gang culture has always been here. Always will be. Um, especially now in California. They don't, you almost got to beg them to put you in jail. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that. Hallmark story with you just to brighten your day a little. Anyhow, I love you. God bless.